have another patient here with neurofibromatosis. We're doing electrodesiccation on this patient. Now, we did the front side, and I usually don't go to the back side, but in certain mild cases, such as this, take a look down here, uh, she's got a relatively mild case. She's got lar some uh, semi-large bumps, and most of them are these tiny, tiny specks, but these will eventually become larger. And the nice thing that this particular patient demonstrates is that you, getting this done early is actually a good thing. So we wanna catch these bumps when they're tiny, not, a, not as they get bigger. As they get bigger, they require a little bit more work to remove them, we have to cut them out, we have to stitch them up, and that slows down the amount, uh, uh, slows down the surgery and the amount of bumps that we can take off in one session. So in this particular patient, she came in early, she's in her early 30s, uh, which is when these start to really accumulate, and we're gonna take care of these bumps sooner than later, and hopefully, abort any further growth that they might experience. Now neurofibromatosis is also a progressive condition. It, it goes on for the patient's entire life, which basically means that even though we knock out a lot of these small bumps early on, they, new bumps can form still over time. So it's important to kind of keep up, keep, uh, keep on going with a maintenance type of regimen to keep these bumps at bay and not let them grow. Because once they grow, the reconstruction becomes a little bit more difficult. The results at the end are a little bit less desirable. So uh, just this patient illustrates very nicely getting in early, getting this done. So not only can we do a large number of these using electrodesiccation, but we can treat them early on and avoid them growing and becoming a problem later on. So let's take a look down here again. So you can see once again, what's the different sizes. So this uh, out of the entire surface of the back, this one's probably the largest, which is great because we can excise that very easily and, and sew that up. But the majority of them are these tiny, faint little precursor bumps. And you can see them all throughout the back. And that those are the ones that we're really going after. Okay, we're getting ready to do some electrodesiccation on this patient here. Now, if you take a look at the, uh, the probe itself, this is a hypercator device. This is what I use to uh, perform electrodesiccation. It's connected to a suction cord, which sucks away any of the noxious fumes that arise from the skin when we do the zaps. It's a very sharp point to it so that I can penetrate deep into the uh, tissues and get the, the, the uh, nidus or the root of those tumors uh, from a deep position. Uh, now, over here is the actual device itself. This, this is the Comet Hypercator 2000. Uh, basically, is a pottery type of device. It, what it does is that it uh, emits a certain type of electric current, and that gets applied to the probe, and that causes a rapid dehydration of tissues within the uh, field. So this is what we're doing. This is what electrodesiccation is. This allows me to go through an entire anatomic area like the back and treat it virtually completely if these are small enough. And how do I know if they're small enough? Well, it's a little bit of experience, but sometimes uh, what, I, what I will do is I will perform elect electrodesiccation on virtually all of these bumps, but some of them will respond better than others. And I allow the duration of the case to go by so that I can see what happens to these tissues over time. For example, if I zap this one, I will keep going past them and keep working on the back, and then I will revisit that one again later on in the surgery. And what that does is that allows the swelling of the tumor in, uh, inside there to pop out and e emerge through the hole that's created from the electrodesiccation. And that's helpful because then I can get the root a little bit better. But if I just went through and I did the electrodesiccation and I didn't come back, what might happen is that these might herniate out of the skin and uh, later on they have to sort of shrink back and settle down, which doesn't always go as planned. So let's do some electrodesiccation. You can see I'm going pretty fast on the small ones. I'm skipping some areas on purpose, and this is just the technique I've developed over the years of how I do it. Now these guys right here, I stay a little bit longer on those. And it goes flat for now, but I want to check that one later on to see if it stays flat. 
same with those. And these are on the larger side and I may need to come back and cut those out. Now one of the things that I do with uh, electro desiccation is sometimes when they're fine bumps, they are difficult to see in certain lighting conditions. So what I do is I will preferentially cast light in different angles to bring those bumps out so I can see them and zap them. Sometimes I don't even use overhead or operating room lights because they're just a little bit too bright and they wash out the bump and the shadows. So what I'm doing here is using this uh, fluorescent operating room light, which is the general room light, to see these shadows a little bit better. Now, what I'll end up doing is pulling over the overhead lights and cast them in certain angles in just a bit, just to make sure I got them all. Now, this one right here is a good one to come back and visualize later on, see if that stays flat. Okay, now we've completed the back for electro desiccation. We're gonna look at those few bumps that I said before. I'm gonna try the electro desiccation, see if it works, and come back to it towards the end of the session to see if I need to take it out in the traditional way, which is to excise it out or cut it out. And in some cases, I could just squeeze it out like a pimple sometimes. So let's take a look. Here we are. We have these that have been treated with electro desiccation, but they're not quite as flat as the rest. The rest of them have this halo of raised skin, kind of like a hive that you would get in, that, in an allergy, and that's from the histamine release from the tumor itself. We know that neurofibromas will release tumor, uh, I'm sorry, uh, neurofibromas will release histamine, and it will cause a little bit of a skin reaction wherever you create the damage to the neurofibroma. Now for this particular bump right here, it didn't quite go down, and if I squeeze around it, I can sort of get the sense that there's something underneath it still and there's a little bit of the root still left underneath, and I'm gonna just squeeze a little bit to see if it wants to come out. And if it doesn't wanna come out, I'm gonna take some <coughs> uh, scalpel or some scissors and actually cut it out uh, to get rid of that extra bump, because I know there's actually material in there. And so we'll put that aside. I'll take a lap spoon. And then I'll perform a little bit more electro desiccation on the wound itself. And now it's gonna take a stitch to close. Okay, now look at this one here. This one has been, electro desiccation has been performed on it, but as you can see, there's a little bit of tumor inside there still, trying to make its way out. So I will just essentially squeeze it a bit to see if it wants to come out. And if not, I grasp it, and you can see some of it comes out in that way. And I will grasp it with some forceps and trim the rest off from underneath. Like that. And again, I'll need to put a stitch in those. So the take home message with electro desiccation for neurofibromatosis is to get in early to be seen. The reason for that again is that these bumps usually start out small and then they will grow either rapidly or very slowly over time but either way they tend to grow and if you can get them with the electro desiccation with the probe early on you could do a large area like this in one session and in this particular patient she also had it on her front surface and we were able to do both sides because it was mild enough and the tumors were small enough where we could use electro desiccation for the majority of the treatment uh, if we had to cut more of these out, then it would take longer than we would do short, uh, smaller surface areas of the body. So get in early, get this uh, evaluated early, and if electrodesiccation is indicated, you want to get on that as well early.